Good Saturday morning, everybody. And when I say Saturday morning, I mean it. Oh, it is early. Ramius, how you doing, sir? So far, so good. It's nice to be up. I'm always up early, so it's just another day in paradise for me. I mean, I'm usually up early. I mean, I'm usually up at five in the morning, but man, it feels good to sleep in at least till eight. Eight sleeping in for me. So that's a. Uh, most people are I couldn't to. tell you the last time I slept until eight. That's just uh, isn't how my body works. You're weird, is what it is. Uh, anyways, um, today on our on this episode, it's gonna be one of our uh, one of our multi part episodes. Today we have a very very special guest, <clears throat> one of our own family members. Hey, Cole, how's it going, buddy? I'm doing all right. How about you? I'm I'm functioning this morning. <laughs> I stayed You're up late. The land of living. I stayed up way too late watching live PD. <laughs> it's it's kind of messed up. You you watch the show so you can see what's screwed up in your state, uh, and then you go, "Oh, keep it classy." So yeah, I don't know, man. Those those cop shows, I just find they're, it's just sad. I can't watch them. Well, I, I'll say one thing. You know, I, I used to watch cops as a kid and and everything, but we started. Uh, I started watching Live PD, and it's hilarious. You get to see a lot of good on there. You get to see a lot of good Samaritans, and and you get to see, um, you get to see some of the cops are actually human beings, and then you actually see the people that they that they come in contact with, whether it's just a, a kind of a welfare check or something that's something bad that's happened, or I mean, you just never know. Watching it, it's, it's always a it's always a mix of things. But yeah, I tell you right now, there's some wild things on that show. But anywho, so um, anyways, what, what we're doing today is we're talking crews and officer setups. We're even, we, we're, we may even delve into the realm of ships and crews. So if, you know, we might get a little technical with some things. Um, but for the most part, we're going to go through the basics today. Um, there, Acold has some crazy insight when it comes to what we do as far as killing reds, uh, mining, the uh, PVP, PVE aspects, uh, you know, ship combinations. It's insane. So we're, we're, we're constantly in AC going, hey, hey, what's this? Hey, hey what's that? Um, how do we do this? Uh, and it's tough to remember everything. How, how this man manages to do it is beyond me. So he is the, uh, he's the resident um, brain and, and computing system when it comes to crews. Well, we have to throw out a shout out to our guy Spike too, because pretty much all of my stuff I've talked over with him before. I think I just spew off more in AC than he does, so maybe he's the smarter one for keeping quiet. But yeah, definitely, like we talk a lot in PM about crews, so I want to acknowledge uh, him as well, because some of these cooler ideas are definitely his home brews. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've got a little bit from him too. So yeah, it's a uh, kind of nice having it. Admiral, did you fall off the edge of Earth over there? Or are you still alive? Oh, I think it's okay. So uh, <clears throat> Admiral's working on some technical difficulties, which is not a big deal. Um, we can cut this out. So he's listening. Um, so as far as um, as far as some of the success that you've seen, just you know, we, we call it science whenever we're going up against armadas or what we like to call them dillos. Um, uh, you know, as far as the success, you know, have you had more trial and error failures or more trial and error success, or have you kind of hit it on the first shot when you've been playing? Well, I mean, when it's science, they're like, we just it's just like hypothesis testing, right? So it's like, oh, I wonder if this works. And, you know, whether it works or not, like, we're happy because like, now we know if it works or not. Right. Um, Sometimes, yeah, I had some, like, spectacular times where as it were actually worked and did a huge, huge decrease in mitigation on an armada, but most of the times it doesn't work. So, yeah, it's, it's all good, really. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Now, I, I, I'm curious. I, I kind of like to, to pick everybody's brain that comes on the show here and, and as far as guest-wise. 
how did you find out about this film? Uh, just randomly, I think, on Google Play. I was playing two other things, and I needed a third game, and I figured this would be okay, and then rapidly, I'm only playing this. <laughs> so. Well, um, I, I know when I when I first started playing, I, uh, I seen... I, it was around Thanksgiving. I saw commercials on TV. I'm going, what the hell is that? That looks cool. And then uh, I'm like, well, it looks cool, but I'm, I'm going to hold off. I already play enough games as it is. And uh, I can see things, you know, see things progressing. Next time a commercial comes out, I was like, man, that commercial is running a lot. And and then finally, I'm just like, you know what? Screw it. My, my curiosity's got the best of me. And so I downloaded it and haven't stopped since. <laughs> so I kind of fell into the same boat as you did. It's like, oh, let's just check that out. Oh, <laughs> now it's just time. Yeah, it tricks you into thinking, you know, you can just play this and then, you know, you put the phone down and then do something else. But then as you level, you realize, oh, no, wait, actually, I always need to keep checking this stupid thing. <laughs> Here you are. Yeah. Reminds me of that uh that meme with Dave Chappelle with the uh, white powder right his nose. Hey, you got any more of them games? <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh no! <laughs> I step away for a minute. Next thing you know, we're talking about white powder. <laughs> so she get her step of the way, boss. <laughs> well, you know, I had to figure out what the problem was. And... Hey, you know what? You know how bad I am at AC. It, I, I'm toning it down in here. <laughs> oh God, this is hilarious. All right, so ha- have you got your your bugs fixed ever? Sir? Yeah, I have. So come to find out, you know, when the little is watching YouTube Kids on her iPad <laughs> and I'm trying to stream, <laughs> it, it suddenly makes it so there's insufficient bandwidth. <laughs> <laughs> that bandwidth looked over and she went goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you stop it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm like, what is going on? I never have this problem. Then I realize, oh, <laughs> she's not she doing that. Oh, yeah, there's no way all this is going to work. I'm I'm thankful that my crumb snatchers are still either asleep. I know the I'm, I'm the oldest one's asleep. <laughs> so, the other two crumb snatchers, one of them's probably asleep. And then the other guy, yeah, he, he's uh, that kid's wild. I don't know how, I don't know how dude wakes up this early on a Saturday. I'm like, dude, sleep in. Nope, Mm-mm. not happening. All right, well, that's <laughs> that. That's kind of how I am. I can't even fight it. I wake up between five and six every morning. Well, I, I typically on a Saturday, I'm typically up by six thirty. Mm-hmm. But today. I don't know what happened. <laughs> live, live PD got you. It did. Got me every time. All right. Okay. So with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, kick off the show here. We've, we've rambled quite a bit here. It's kind of, kind of nice getting a background of where everybody's coming from. So um, let's go ahead and kick it out into the officers and crew. Just to, just some basics on that one, AK. Yeah, sounds good. What do you want to start with? Um. Let's talk about let's just talk about the like the cadets. You know, what what uh as far as leveling them up, you know, tearing them, so on and so forth, you know, what's what's a wise investment starting off, or is it wise just to go ahead and level them up as fast as you can until you get your purples? Because there there's some different schools of thoughts. You know, one person says, Nah, don't do that. Another person's like, Yeah, go for it. Um so and and, and a lot a lot comes RNG when it comes to the actual um, cadets that you get or officers that you get as far as when you're hitting the boxes. Right. So <clears throat> the cadets are really, really good. Uh, when I talk about the cadets, I'm referring to Uhura, Instructor Spock, and uh, Cadet Kirk. Um, Scotty is useful for a whole bunch of other things, but not for the purposes of this topic right now. And in my opinion, the other cadets are garbage. So I've never touched Sulu or McCoy cadets. Um, just 
never got around to it and now I never will. In terms of leveling them, um, you definitely want to get them to the max tier as soon as you can. Once they're level 20, going from 20 to 30 is probably less important unless you're just sw swimming in officer XP and you want to use it for events. Um, if you have greens and blues and purples that need it, put your XP in them before gray. Now, something I want to kind of throw yeah. in, something I want to throw in there, not, not to yeah. interrupt, but um, <clears throat> I I know that we we as a group, you know, we talk a lot about you know the the, the officers and comms that we use, um, and I know that you did say just a second ago about leveling up. Some of them aren't aren't worth leveling up. Um, I have noticed since I just hit 28 the other day and I've got my fourth dock, um, I've got an extra battleship. I've got an extra miner besides the one, the, the three, the three slots that I've already got. Um, but as far as base defense and stuff like that, um, you put another battleship in there just to kind of add a little bit more power, a little more, a little more defense. Um, <clears throat> I've noticed that a lot of my crew, I don't have full, Klingon crew or full Romulan crew or whatever that may be a, an extra and all of my good crew I've got it mixed up and on my on my heavier ships as far as strength goes uh, would it behoove anybody to to go ahead and just level them up like you said during an officer event get them leveled up get them maxed out that way when they do hit level uh, level 28 to grab that fourth dock or um, what's uh, I can't, I don't, where, when's the fifth dock come into play I can't remember 39, I think. <clears throat> level four, 39. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you don't get a, a fifth dock unless you're level 39. Yeah, so. Okay, so, um, you know, as you add those docks through the game, you definitely want to level up, level them up and get, it, get them as strong as possible. Would, would that make sense at all? That way, so when you do get that, that extra dock, you can put them as a placeholder until you get better comms in that, or is that kind of a misnomer? The um, most important thing is to tier it. And I mean, yeah, like there's, there's something wrong with what you're suggesting. I mean, you can do it, but you don't have to. If you do it, good. If you don't, it's fine too. It, it all depends on how much of that officer XP you have to work with. Um, we've been lucky lately. Scopely has given out a bunch. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting on several million in reserve. So, you know, I've leveled up some cadets recently because I was sitting on a few million. But when I was poor for the longest time in officer XP, then my Uhura stayed 23 for months because the blues needed it more. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the one thing that I've noticed. Like a lot of my blues, they've been, they've been leveled up here. How's it, how's your blues looking there, Ramesh? I think I lost, we lost him again. Ramesh's blues need some help. He needs more of them to be T3, and the salary <laughs> would be so much better. Yeah. We, 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 oh, he's muted. There he is. Maybe. No. I believe he's still having technical difficulties. Well, apparently this is just running deep with uh, Shadi and, and Hake right now, so. Start changing the, uh, start changing the logo. <laughs> Must have to got something funny in Discord. Um, all right. Well, with that being said, um, we'll we'll come back to Ramius whenever he gets his audio issues squared away. And he just disappeared. Okay. Um, so he's back, and he's muted. I can only imagine on the other end. I can hear you suck. You suck. You suck. <laughs> I can't, it's either the sense of that of that level or i don't know may, maybe a hammer getting thrown at it i don't know i'm, I'm joking arameus doesn't throw hammers at things he runs over with a chainsaw um <laughs> all right well with that being said we'll go ahead and, and carry on to um in the officers and crew area, as far as um, some of the the entry level uh, groups, uh, the difference between the 
you know, the, the Romulan, the, the, the gray Romulan crew, the, the gray uh, Klingon crew, and, and, and Federation crew. Um, which one is the best one as far as entry level? Um, well, I don't, I don't, entry level is kind of rough to say. Once you finally get into the game, obviously you get more crew members. So as far as going going with the crew, once you get somewhat established, uh, what what did you start out with as far as running? Did you stick with fed crew like you know, you know as, as typical, or did you did you veer off and go one of the other factions as far as as those guys? Well, I ran the cadets forever because I didn't have any purples forever. Right. So I just used the cadets on every ship all the time because they were just so good. That was before the ship rebalance when they were even better. So I did that. And then I finally got lucky and got purple, Mm -hmm. which was Kirk. And so then I started playing with that a little bit. But for the longest time, you only have two docks. So then one's a miner and one's your cadet. Then when you get to three docks, you're probably mining with two ships and one's your cadet. Like you were saying before, it's when you get to four that it really starts to be a lot more interesting and you have to run more things. But um, what I did is I did uh, dual faction, uh, Fed and Klingon. Because if you look at the different crews you have, um, to level up officers to anywhere near of a useful tier, you have to need to you have to start spending faction credits. So if you look at your crews, there's an absolute crushing majority of the groups of officers that are Federation people and need Federation credits. You've got your Enterprise crew, your cadets, your hostile crew, Section 31. I mean, I'm sure there's others, even some of the augments use uh, Fed credits, some of the miners use Fed credits. So you have this crushing demand for Federation credits to level the officers. So my plan was to do Klingon ships and then use my Federation credits to have a bunch of good Federation officers. And so far that has worked. So what I'm working on now is getting my Kirk, Bones, and Spock enterprise group uh, tiered up so that when I eventually get a good explorer, I'll have a good crew for that. Okay. So if um, people are thinking dual factions, uh, you probably should just because you get double credits and actually have some to spend on officers. Right. Now, I kind <clears> of <throat> speak on, on the on the faction level issue. I fell into a whole last I'm wanting to say, I don't know, last June, um, I had uh, I had Fed and Klingon dual faction, and I started doing some missions because I'm like, oh, cool, I got my Kumari. Yeah, and I completely hosed my dual faction. Uh, I was I was running pretty well, um, so I started doing some missions, and I didn't realize one of the missions that I did was 100K to through the Klingons, and I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to just do these missions because I needed needed the stuff, and then all of a sudden, I'm looking. I'm Klingons aren't happy with me. I'm starting to get arrows arrows thrown at me, and or rocks thrown at me, arrows shot at me whenever I roll through the neighborhood. So they were not happy. I'm like, uh, what's going on here? And I look, and I went way negative in Klingon space. I'm like, that is not good. So I am unfortunately stuck um, as a consort with the Federation. So I'm, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm doing, uh, I'm doing, uh, just the, the, the single, single faction. I'm just going to top it out and then I'll go work on, work on my Klingon rep and get that up. Cause you can eventually lock in and then you can work on your next, your next rep, and then you can work on a third rep if you decide to do triple faction. So that is a possibility. Yeah, absolutely. But but if you can work on your dual faction now, it will save you so much time later. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I was talking about this with uh, Spike earlier. You know, the, um, the concept of okay, so you can get your triple faction. 
but then what? And our theory is when you do get your three at 10 million, then you're probably going to have to pick one and go hard with that one because all the good stuff, you need hundreds of millions of rep and you're never going to get up there by trying to maintain three above 10 million. Yeah, that's so uh, that's what we think is the best way to do. Yeah, that's going to be the that's going to be the tough one. I mean, me, I'm if if I had my my uh, Mary handshake kill um, with uh, <laughs> with the fed, with with the uh, factions, it's obviously I'm I'm fed all the way. Klingon is my second favorite, and I don't really care for Romulans, so. <laughs> Does anybody like the Romulans? Well, there are people out there that are weird. So, <clears throat> I mean, if you if, if you like Romulans, no, no, no offense, but you're weird. <laughs> yeah, I hate the Romulans, but I'm seriously considering going Romulan when I get triple faction, just because of all the Fed fanboys out there to just like farm their ships. <laughs> well, I'm I'm getting all kinds of all kinds of ships, no matter where I'm at. No matter where I'm at, as far as what I'm hitting, I'm always getting blueprints. So, um, Ramius is back. He got his his technical he got his technical uh, issues squared away here. He's got to step away to do something for the family real quick, and then I'll be right back. But uh, okay, cool. Um, so we kind of dipped into to the factions. That's always cool. Um, and I don't know. I think I think we may have missed the point that I was looking for. You know, like starting out. So you, so kind of a recap. You said you started out with 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 the Fed crew. They run great. The Fed cadets was was awesome until you finally got your purples. Um, so that's the big thing is getting into your purples. And a lot of folks they won't get into their purples for a while. Um, I know I've had uh, I've had my I've had my fair share of triumphs and in 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 misery when it comes to getting my purples um the other day i literally hit the hit a um, faction box and got uh, a full mitchell on one shot so i've got a, a full so i got mitchell going and he's halfway to the next uh to the next set of levels um which i i kind of lucked out um i had a I had a, a victory a while back. Uh, I got a, a full Nero out of a box, and then still had eighty some credits that I uh, eighty some shards that I had to begin with. And then shortly after that, I got enough Nero credits to to buff him up to to tier two. So I've I kind of lucked out there, big time. <laughs> well, well, Nero an interesting one to to talk about if you want to circle back to armadas and officers. Yeah, actually, yeah, we, we can we can hit right into that here. Um, it's funny. Yes, I said I don't like Romulans, but when you got Nero, he, he just does bad things to whatever it is that you're hitting. So it's kind of hard to kind of hard to, to not like that guy. But then again, is he really truly a Romulan? That's a whole nother that's a whole nother episode. Um, so with all that being said, um, Nero and Armadas, um, as as a lot of you all know, and we're obviously getting into some of the more advanced stuff. Um, Nero does burn damage, and his burn damage is insane. So, um, which is probably what you're leading into as far as the Armadas go. So, you want to kind of delve into that and give us some insight? Yeah, absolutely. So, the burn damage is a percentage, and we're pretty sure it's one percent of the hull every round your opponent is burning. So if you're fighting PvP and the guy has a 200k ship and you burn him for 2,000 hull points, well, that's not very good. But if you're fighting a 10 million hull point armada and every round, and it's a 30 round fight and every round it's burning, it's taking 1% hull damage, Mm -hmm. then that adds up to huge. So yeah, that's that's the point. Is on long fights against opponents with a ton of hull HP, you want to run Nero. So you'd also want to run him against a separatist boss, as an example. Gotcha. Now, um, <clears throat> one of the things to remember where we're getting all of our all of our data as far as um, rounds and stuff like that. Because some folks are like, wait a minute, rounds? What do you mean rounds? Well, every battle, whether it's whether it's a red, whether it's an armada, whether it's PvP. Um, no matter what, 
there's always rounds. So you, like you'll you'll trade shots back and forth, or you'll have you know your your officers will kick in their abilities, and it'll all go back and forth. So what you'll want to do is you want to go into your battle log after the battle, and then you can scan through. You can see well, um, Nero did this. His captain ability kicked in here. So on and so forth. And then you've got Livis. And then Livis's <clears throat> officer ability kicked in here. And what you want to do is it's kind of like, uh, for me, the best way I can describe it is kind of like playing a game where you have armor or pieces of equipment that go together. That's your crew. So if you have one crew member that enhances a captain ability, do it. <clears throat> if they do the enhancement of the same captain ability, say they say they if the ship's burning or if whatever's burning and they do something, if it's burning, so Nero's hit something, it's burning. Then you have the two other officers on the deck and they do both. They do things as far as burn damage. It just makes, it just enhances that even more, which obviously we're getting a little, we're getting real deep into that one, but you'll want to look and pay attention to your battle logs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the one thing about the battle logs, though, is not everything shows in there. Like, burn damage doesn't show in the log. That's why I was saying before, we think it's 1%. But it's real. It exists. It totally shows up um, and is real, but you'll never find your burn damage in the log. What you'll find is what you were just talking about. It'll show activations of abilities that happen when the ship is burning. So that kind of proves it's burning and doing something. Right. And that, that's that's the one thing, because you won't actually see the, the specific type of damage. It won't say it's burning this or it's doing this, which I wish they would actually put that into the battle log. Um, that would be helpful. Scopely, kind of a wish list item. Uh, show show the different types of damage, whether it's burn damage or electrical damage or whatever. You know, if, if, there's, a, if there's a specific type of damage that happens, um, then if we could see that, that would help to say, hey, okay, cool. I know what kind of damage I'm doing as far as is this particular this particular shot so yeah that's that's the big thing it doesn't tell you exactly what your damage is it just says hey you've initiated this damage or this captain ability here's the damage that happened afterward as far as the whole deal because because it's not just burn damage that you're seeing you're seeing phaser damage your 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 energy your kinetic um plus whatever the 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 captain's ability or whoever else's ability that's getting activated in that line so you're not there's not a breakdown inside of that yeah for sure it'd be really nice like some of the captain abilities say okay um it activated and 90 percent of the crew's health is subtracted from the opponent's shield and could you just have like you know a little in brackets fifty thousand or something to like let us know how much that is that would be quite useful Yep, yep, and and on on kind of on the de the defense side for Scopely, they they want to try to keep the game light, which we all know because if you you get a real heavy game as far as uh, as far as uh, actual space use, it's going to take up a lot of your your a lot of your device. <clears throat> so they they want to try to keep a good balance of hey, we got really great graphics, so we got a pretty nice game or a really great game. And then we also don't want to take up all your phone space, so you still have room to do other things like, you know, the family some pictures. You could listen to music, uh, you know, books, you know, audio books, what have you. So they're they're trying to keep that balance of trying to not make the game so heavy. I mean, really, it's kind of a line of code they can say, oh yeah, well this did this and this. So it's not really like a huge add-on, but they definitely want to keep it light as far as you know the weight of the game. Yeah, for sure. Oh, cool. Um, so, like, like I said, we, we started talking about Armadas, and we started talking about about Nero and his abilities. Um, what are some of the uh, what are some of the setups that you use? And kind of be brief with them, because I know you utilize a few different setups when when running the Armadas. Um, kind of touch on on like say Nero's crew. What when you use Nero and, and his crew for the just just say for the DPS aspect and the and the burn aspect of an armada you know who who do you use what's your what's what kind of a officer layout yeah sure so what you were saying before about you know like doing synergies and pairing people together like that true 95 percent of the time for armadas though is 
when <clears throat> that becomes a lot less important. Um, and so I'll often break up synergy groups in an armada. So if I'm running Nero, he's the only Romulan and he's just there for the burn. Um, if I have Nero there for burn, I might use Gonzalez as a captain. Uh, she's really good because she does two things versus the Armada. She increases your crit chance and she increases the size of your crit when you do hit. So she's a very good captain to have for Armadas. And then something you could pair with that group would be either, uh, would be something that stacks damage over time. So say a Decius or a Khan, if you have them, would be even better. <clears throat> so that would be just like a basic high damage crew. <clears throat> it could be Gonzalez captain, Khan on one side and Nero on the other. Um, that's just gonna hit really hard. If you're fighting an armada that actually has bite and is hitting you back and hurting your ships, um, in that case, you probably want to do a more survival build. So the basic one there is having Kirk and Spock. Uh, it doesn't have to be Kirk, uh, but just as long as someone who gives morale consistently. And so for, for most people, that's Kirk. And then that gives you uh, a whole bunch of shields. If you have your Spock at T4, you're getting 400% of the defense. As a shield regen, every round you have uh, morale. So that just lets you live. And then in your third spot, you know, you can put a Khan or a Nero or a Decius, something for damage. Or if you're really going against a tough one, then you can put in another survival person. So either Bones or Gala. Okay. Do you want to touch on Gala? She's really good in Armadas because she decreases the critical damage of the enemy, and it applies to all five ships. So if you have one person running her, it benefits everyone in the group. Nice, nice. All righty. Um, so you got anything else as far as armadas go here? Or? Yeah, it's basically just either it's an easy one, hit it as hard as you can, as fast as you can, or it's a hard one, and then you don't die. as your two basic armada crews. <laughs> yeah, there you go, there you go. Well, um, with that being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and end this episode, and um, this is going to be in a part one. Uh, we're going to continue with part two with um, the uh, – we're going to talk about swarms. We're going to talk about yellows. We're going to talk about base cracking and PvP, and then hostile farming because that's – you know, everybody needs to do a little bit of that. So with that being said – Hey, look. Look at you coming at the end of part one. Hey, <laughs> no, no. Happens. Hey, life happens. Exactly. So with that being said, um, thank you everybody for, for hanging out with us on part one here. We're going to do part two and, and, and have that recorded and get you guys going for the next round of, uh, of goodies. So uh, um, I think I'm listening back here. You hear Scotty back here rattling around? Sure do. All right. Well, hey, uh, he's over there getting ready to fire up the warp cores on this beast and get it running. So... <clears throat> Everybody, y'all have a great, uh, great Saturday, and we'll see you on the other side of the planets. Fly safe. Live long and kick ass. Remember to follow us on our social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We can be hey, found on iTunes, Podbeam, Patreon, and here on YouTube. All right, never mind. Comment below, <laughs> click like if you do, right. and subscribe just, because I, you I should have to, already. To run the outro, do not forget to click the bell to get the alert when the next later, episode so. is available. Okay.